Okay, in today's lab, we're going to use the Power Lab system. Uh, so the Power Lab 26T, uh, and so it's got a front panel where you're going to have a series of inputs. We're going to collect, uh, connect the peripherals to collect the physiological measurements. Uh, kind of along the back, uh, we're going to have a series of switches, and, uh, yeah, switches for like turning it on and off, uh, as well as connectors. Uh, so you're going to need three uh, things in addition to uh, the Power Lab system. Uh, the first is going to be a power cable, so just a basic power cable. Uh, so it looks, you know, like it plugged into the back of your computer. Uh, this plugs into the back of the power lab system, uh, and so make sure uh, that the power switch uh, is in the off position, so in the zero position. Uh, plug this in uh, as if you were to plug in uh, any other device, uh, and then, you know, the other end into uh, the outlet on the wall. The second cable uh, that you're going to need is going to be a USB cable to connect up the power lab system uh, to the computer. Uh, so it's got a USB uh, cable at one end, just a standard USB, uh, and then kind of a kind of a rounded off uh, rectangular uh, connector at the other end. This again is going to plug into the back of the power lab system, uh, and so you should see a USB uh, symbol there with the connector. Uh, this is going to fit in, again, because of the rounded off rectangle, it's only going to fit in one way. Uh, don't force it, it should slide in if you've got the orientation right. But once that's plugged in, uh, connect up the USB end into the USB port uh, into uh, the back of the computer. Uh, the final device uh, is going to be allowing us to collect the physiological measurements. Uh, this is going to be a pulse transducer, uh, and so you have an 8-pin DIN connector uh, at one end, uh, and then a pulse transducer, kind of a smooth edge uh, with a Velcro strap on it. Now, what we're going to do uh, is take the 8-pin DIN uh, connector uh, and then plug that into input 1 uh, on the front of the computer, I'm sorry, the front of the power lab system. Uh, again, because of the notch in that, that's only going to fit in one way. Uh, should fit in relatively snugly. Uh, but again, uh, you don't want to force it if you've got the orientation wrong. Uh, and finally, with the pulse transducer, you've got a smooth end uh, with uh, the kind of sensor capabilities. You're going to put that uh, onto uh, the pad of the finger. Uh, you're going to wrap the Velcro strap uh, around the finger. Uh, you don't want it to be so loose that it, it's kind of flopping around or the cable's flopping around. You also don't want it to be so tight that it's going to cut off circulation because if you cut off circulation, you're not going to have any uh, blood flow. You're not going to be able to uh, measure the pulse in that. So you get relatively smooth. Uh, and then you're going to want to make sure that your test subject uh, is in kind of a relaxed position. And so ideally, uh, resting the hand kind of in an upright position so the pulse transducer, you know, isn't coming up against any other object or moving around a whole lot. Uh, and again, if you're moving the cable, that's going to introduce some artifacts into uh, the uh, recording uh, as you're using uh, the lab chart system. So, you know, rest it along, you know, kind of the surface of the table, maybe the surface of the leg, uh, or, you know, kind of allow it to kind of hang uh, kind of at rest uh, off the edge of the table or edge of the leg. Ultimately, you want to make sure that you're not moving around uh, the finger, moving around the pulse transducer, because that's going to interfere with uh, good recordings. So the power lab system uh, is plugged in uh, to the outlet. Uh, the USB cable is plugged into the back of the computer. Uh, the uh, pulse transducer uh, is plugged into input number one. Uh, the uh, pulse transducer is on the middle finger and ready to record. Uh, the lab, I'm sorry, the uh, power lab system uh, is turned on. Uh, the computer is now uh, on as well. So the next thing we want to do is to turn on uh, the lab chart software system. Uh, and so what you want to do uh, is find uh, the lab chart icon, lab chart number eight uh, on the computer. Double click on that. This will bring you to the welcome center. Uh, if it doesn't come up to this screen uh, exactly, uh, click on getting started here. Go down to introduction to lab chart eight. Uh, settings file, uh, and then double click on Pulse Settings. Uh, this will bring up uh, a chart view. Uh, and so I'm going to maximize this to take a look at it. Uh, click Start here. Uh, and we can start to see uh, kind of the new trace coming through. Now, ultimately, uh, the amplitude uh, is relatively small. Uh, at this point, uh, the y-axis here uh, is showing voltage. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see at this point. Uh, and so there are two ways to adjust the amplitude. 
The first way is to go up here uh, on the upper right, down where it has pulse, pull down on this aerial, aerial uh, and go to pulse transducer. Uh, and then what we have here uh, is the range. Uh, and so taking a look at uh, two volts uh, as the range here. Uh, what we want to do is decrease that to about 100 millivolts uh, so that ultimately our peaks are going to be a little bit higher. Uh, so if we say okay to that uh, and start, you can again see kind of clear peaks that are going to be present. You can see a little bit of uh, static here uh, in the uh, kind of between the beats uh, going on. Uh, but overall, uh, relatively good trace uh, that's going on uh, as well right there. Now, if for whatever reason, uh, you're not seeing uh, a clear trace like this, I'll skip it again for a moment. Uh, if you're moving around uh, a bit, uh, it's gonna look kind of something like this. So a lot of static. Uh, if it is too loose, and I'm touching it now, uh, and so if it's too loose, uh, again, you get a lot of static, not a clear uh, indication of the uh, pulse uh, being picked up on. Uh, tighten it up a little bit. Still kind of loose, and you see lots of static in, kind of something like that. Uh, and so if you're seeing a field like this uh, on your scope view, a chart view, uh, it's an indication that something wrong, that something is wrong. Ideally, you should see, uh, again, a pattern that looks relatively stable like this. Uh, so over here, uh, it's too loose. This is in pretty good shape if it is too tight. Again, you can see kind of on this, um, stable and too tight. We're basically blocking the blood flow into the finger. Uh, and so there's nothing for the pulse transducer to pick up on. So ultimately uh, what you wanna do is have it snug, not too tight, not too loose, uh, have the individual at rest. Uh, and again, seeing a relatively stable pattern uh, of the pulse rate kind of going through like this. Uh, and so we were able to adjust uh, the y-axis, uh, the voltage differential. We can also adjust uh, the x-axis here, the x-axis, the time interval. Uh, down here in the bottom, uh, we can compress uh, the horizontal scaling, basically the little mountains kind of putting things closer and closer together, or the big mountains making them further and further uh, apart. We go into kind of this range right here for now. Uh, and so what we've got then is a pretty stable uh, kind of pulse trace uh, that's going through. And now we wanna start taking some measurements. And so in order to take the measurements, uh, you wanna hit stop, uh, just because it's easier to see it that way. I'll scale a little bit here. Uh, and so what we wanna do uh, is know, you know what is the interval uh, between one heart rate uh, and the next. Uh, and so in the old days, you'd have to go through, figure out what the scale is along the x-axis and get a ruler out and measure that. You don't have to do that uh, with the lab chart system. Uh, so what we're gonna do uh, is go in here, go to the peak of one of these uh, pulse beats, uh, right click on this uh, and add a marker or set marker. Uh, and hopefully that'll get in at the peak. If it's not, you can go uh, and grab it uh, and then move it around. Uh, and so we're gonna put this at the peak, hopefully at the peak. So like that. Uh, and then if we look up here uh, in the upper corner, uh, this is gonna give us the measurements from our marker to where our, mark, or our uh, pointer is here, where the cursor is here. Uh, so in this case, go peak to peak, uh, it's about 0.8 seconds. And so, you know, a, a little less than a second from one heartbeat uh, to the next. Uh, and so we can go through uh, and take those measurements. Now at times uh, we want to collect this information uh, into uh, a data pad. Uh, and so what we can do uh, is add the data pad view up here. So just click on that, brings up a new window, uh, but now we can't see our, our chart view. Uh, so go up here uh, to smart tile, click on that. Um, actually I want it kind of above and below. Let's see if we get that way. Click on the chart view again. Okay, and we've got one above uh, and one below. Uh, and so if we're gonna do this, uh, we've got the data pad view open down here at the bottom. Uh, go into column A, click on this, 
uh, go to column setup. Uh, and we want to make sure we've got selection of the active port. Say OK. Uh, and then under B, uh, what we want to do uh, is again column setup. And in this case, we want to go into cyclical measurements or cyclic measurements. So cyclic measurements here, uh, and then we want uh, the period. So average cycle period is going to give us the uh, amount of time from one peak to the next peak. So you click on that. And so what we're going to have is the ability then uh, to look at point to point. So if we want to we can add that to the data pad. Come through, check on that, cyclic measurement. Oh, and so if you've got something not showing up there, make sure your calculation is from the source and we want it coming from the pulse source there. So click OK there, try that again. So add to data pad. Uh, and again, we've got a situation here where from this marker to where we place that uh, is 0.8 seconds. So we put our marker in place. Uh, we select where we want to go here. Uh, and so if we do this, this again gives us uh, a 0.8 uh, second. So a uh, little less than a second. Uh, and that's consistent with what we saw up here uh, in the upper right. Uh, now, there are times in which we want to uh, collect uh, multiple measurements at the same time. Uh, and so I'm going to close out the data path for now. Uh, we're going to go into setup, channel settings, uh, and we're going to add another channel. Uh, and so down here at the bottom, we're going to add number channels two uh, and click OK. Uh, we've got another channel down here. Uh, and then we've got to define what that channel is. And so we're going to go here into cyclic measurements. Uh, we're going to add in so that the source uh, is pulse. Uh, we're taking a look at the pulse rate. We're going to add any bit markers, which is going to measure every peak. Uh, and then we're going to say OK. Let's go into cyclic measurements. Uh, make sure that we're choosing uh, channel one of the pulse. Uh, we're going to um, click it to auto scale, do the event markers, uh, and then say OK. And so right now, uh, this is showing us our, our beats per minute. Um, and again, a couple uh, high peak there, kind of making it seem as if the, the heart rate uh, is going up. So a couple uh, kind of uh, intermittent peaks kind of coming in and in a period. But in general, we can see that uh, the pulse rate uh, is relatively stable. If we want to now collect data from multiple points, uh, you can highlight a, a region, uh, bring our data pad back. Uh, and again, uh, put this into um, the smart tiling so you can see everything in place. Uh, and so we've highlighted a region. Uh, and now we want to go up here to the top uh, and do multiple add to data pad. Uh, and so what we want uh, in this case uh, is find using the event marker. And we want it just for the selection and click add. Uh, and again, this is giving us the average uh, cyclic period, the average uh, amount of time between one heartbeat and the next kind of in this range right here. Okay, so if we uh, want, we can then you know, export this into Excel or copy and paste it into Excel or, or, or Google Sheets uh, and use that uh, to make calculations. Now, in order to do the experiment, uh, what we want to want to do uh, is go through get over here to the end. Uh, once you've got everything set up, uh, you could also, um, and don't worry about it, uh, what you can go through uh, is add a comment here so uh, add comment, so right click on it. I'm gonna go at rest. Okay, so once we have everything set up, we're ready to collect some data. 
Uh, and so if you want to, uh, you can actually go up here to edit, uh, select all, edit uh, clear selection. Make sure you want to uh, delete the data. Yeah, if you get everything set up. Uh, but now we've got everything the way we want. Uh, we can also right click on this and clear contents down here. Uh, and so what we're gonna do uh, is go through um, start for a second, stop. So we're gonna add a comment uh, and this is gonna be at rest. So we're gonna add it. And then we're gonna do pulse rate uh, for um, two minutes uh, at rest. And so the individual should be sitting um, relatively relaxed uh, without moving their hand around too much. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna let this go uh, for about a minute. And you see I'm moving around a little bit here, so we're not getting good measurements at this point. It's a little bit better, so it's stable. So, you know, the person monitoring the chart view can let the person know, if, uh, the subject know uh, if they're moving around too much. Okay, so at this point, uh, I've got about a minute collected. You're gonna do about two minutes. I'm gonna stop it here. Uh, we're going to right click at this point and we're gonna add a comment. Uh, and this comment is gonna be after two minutes of stairs. And at this point, uh, your subject is gonna take off uh, the pulse transducer uh, and then run up and down the, or not run up and down, uh, briskly walk up and down the stairs uh, for two minutes. And so I will leave you for now and do that. Okay, so I'm back uh, hooking up the pulse transducer now. Got our comment. Let's start. And you can see right off the bat uh, that the heart rate uh, is about 100 uh, as opposed to the range of about 60, 70 uh, at rest. Now what you wanna do is collect your measurements uh, for two minutes and take a look at it kind of immediately after, immediately after uh, completing the exercise uh, and then taking a look at the uh, rate of recovery. Hey, once you've done um, taking your measurements, collecting all of your data, um, you can either uh, submit your data set if, you, if you've got a good one, uh, there's a link on Canvas, uh, but if not, uh, or if you are, you can go through and click save. Save this one through save as, uh, to save it as an ADI CHT file, uh, save it on the computer, uh, but it may be lost you know, when you log off the computer, so make sure you submit it uh, to Canvas. Uh, and then you can go file uh, exit. Uh, and at that point, uh, you can go over, turn off the uh, power lab system. Uh, once the power lab system is turned off, you can then uh, take the pulse transducer, uh, uh, unplug that, uh, unplug the uh, power lab, um, yeah, the power lab system from the USB uh, and out of the uh, power supply, power outlet on the wall uh, and put away all of your materials. 